Today, I'm going to describe the science fiction movie In Time, directed by Andrew Nicol. In the movie, we will see time is money, life, and everything for people. Before the start of the movie, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share with us your favorite part of the movie in the comment section below. The film begins in a futuristic world where paper money does not exist. Instead, individuals exchange products and services with time. And at the age of 25, all humans stop to age. However, once they reach the age of 25, they will only have one year to live. To avoid death, they must work more hours, just as they do for money. A timer on the wrist of everyone indicates how much time they have left until they die. Time has become the world's currency. Rich people are immortal because they can purchase as much time as they want. Those who are poor, on the other hand, work hard every day in order to gain a day or two in their lives. The rich raise the cost of living in order for the poor to accumulate more time and become eternal. The time difference between the wealthy and the poor is exponential. The rich living for millennia while the poor struggle to survive. Will is a man who lives in the country's ghetto. He awakens one day to discover that he has fewer than 24 hours to live. He has to get additional work done as quickly as feasible. He lives with his 50-year-old mother Rachel. She too only has three days remaining in her life. The two must pay a bill, but the time they have is insufficient. Will tells his mother that he will find a solution. Rachel then informs Will that she will be working for two days in order to acquire enough money to pay off their loan. When she returns, she wants Will to be at the bus station so he can help her out. Will on the other hand, gets contacted on his way to work by a little girl called Mai. She asks Will for a minute and is pleased when he delivers her five minutes instead, Will is generous even when he is on the edge of death. With his friend Boral, he works in a factory that makes time-storing devices. He works for the entire day and is paid in the end. However, when he examines his time, he notices that it is insufficient. He requested full payment from the distributor, but it turned out that the daily labor quota had increased. Will, who is stressed, goes to the pub, where he encounters a drunk and cheerful Boral Bora. Ellen informs Will about a man named Henry who is buying drinks for everyone in the bar and has a century of time on his wrist. Will watches the wealthy man and notices that several people are staring at him strangely. He rushes to warn Henry, who is refusing to go. Then a gang of Minutemen gangsters rushes into the bar and orders everyone to leave. They've come to rob Henry. A Minuteman keeps an eye on Henry as he dashes to the bathroom and pukes. Will comes in and knocks the man unconscious. He then escapes, taking Henry with him. The Minutemen chase them as they flee, but they manage to shelter inside an abandoned structure. They then introduce themselves to one another. Henry discloses that he is 105 years old and wishes to die. He has had enough of life and is exhausted. As a result, he arrived at the bar impulsively without caring whether he was killed. Will is irritated by the man's carelessness with time while he and everyone else suffer to obtain more of it. The terrible reality of their life is subsequently revealed to Will by Henry. Rich people regularly raise the expense of life in order to steal more time from the poor and become eternal. The rich grow richer while poor people die. When in reality there is adequate time for everyone, the selfish rich grab it all. Will is stunned by the revelation and furious because he is unable to intervene. They spend the night at the isolated location. In the morning, Henry gets up early and devotes all of his time to Will, leaving him with only five minutes. Will is taken aback when he notices a century's worth of time on his wrist. He then comes upon Henry, who is sitting on a nearby bridge. As Henry's time comes to an end, he smiles and jumps into the river. Will then goes to meet Burl and his wife, who is holding their newborn baby. Will takes Burl aside and tells him everything that happened the day before. When asked what he intends to do now, he will give part of his time to Burl. Will responds that he wants to bring equality to the globe and eliminate the wealth and poverty gap. Rachel, who has been working hard for several days, finally pays off her loan and walks to the bus stop. She realizes, however, that she does not have enough time to ride the bus. She begins to rush back home in order to make it to Will on time. Will begin to run towards her as well. Rachel, on the other hand, dies in Will's arms when they eventually meet. Will cries as he recalls his mother's death, which might have been avoided in a matter of seconds. The following day, the timekeepers, a police force, 
discovers Henry's body in the river. Bremen, the senior timekeeper, and Jaeger, his subordinate, investigate the case. In the next scene, Will is seen inside a fancy car wearing his new clothes. He's traveling to a wealthy neighborhood on the other side of the time zone. In contrast to Will's town, he ultimately arrives in the city of New Greenwich. New Greenwich is a developed and exclusive neighborhood. He used to run to gain time, but now he quickly calms down and behaves more sophisticatedly. He sleeps in a luxurious hotel and wakes up in his costly suit. He has a delicious breakfast for the first time in his life. He tips the waitress once a week after paying for the dinner. Meanwhile, the timekeepers get surveillance footage and find that Will is connected to Henry's death. Will, on the other hand, goes to the casino to gamble. There, he meets a millionaire called Felipe Weiss and defeats him in a few matches of poker. He is practically immortal and has access to every luxury in the world. Will's lifetime totals more than two centuries after a few more rounds. Will switches attention to Sylvia, the girl seated near Felipe. As the table converses, Felipe discusses the wealth gap and says that it is normal. Will is enraged by this. As a result, when Felipe raises two more centuries, Will bides all of his time, leaving him with only 30 seconds. He wins the round and obtains a millennium for life. Will's personality impresses and intrigues Felipe. When he finds Will staring at Sylvia, he introduces her as his daughter. Felipe also invites him to a party at his house and promises that he will get a new car to go to Felipe's mansion. He doesn't know anybody there, but Sylvia approaches and strikes up a discussion with him. During the two dances, Sylvia tells him about her worthless existence. She too is tired of being like Henry all the time. The two then head outdoors to swim at the pool. The timekeepers return to the home in search of Will. Will is taken to a private office, where Raymond introduces himself. Will tells them the truth about how he accumulated millennia of time. Raymond confiscates Will's time and arrests him because he does not believe his explanation. Will question Raymond on why he is investigating a suicide when there are so many killings in the ghetto every day. Will then attack the timekeepers and succeeds to grab Sylvia. He and Sylvia escape from the estate in his vehicle. The timekeepers chase them, but they manage to flee. Will asks Sylvia for some time after hiding beneath a bridge, but she refuses. Early in the morning, their car smashes on the highway. Men discover the two at this time and steal Sylvia's time, leaving her with only 30 minutes. When they wake up, Will gives her a few minutes and the two flee to get away from Burl. Burl's wife, on the other hand, notifies them of his death from alcohol intoxication. He had spent all of his time purchasing an infinite amount of alcohol. Will sees Sylvia's expensive jewelry and brings her to a pawn shop. They accept the dealer's offer of two days for the jewelry. Will and Sylvia spend the night in Will's place and discuss a variety of topics. Will tell her about his father, who used to gamble and get his winnings to those in need. The two begin to fall in love with one another after hearing each other's experiences. In the morning, Will asks Felipe to ransom him and his daughter for 1,000 years but he refuses. Sylvia is saddened by her father and realizes how greedy he is. Will take Sylvia to a phone booth and leave her with a gun as a farewell gift. He intends to allow her to return to the city. When Raymond approaches Will, Sylvia is on the phone with her father. When Sylvia notices this, she shoots the timekeeper. Will notices Raymond is bleeding and gives them some time to save him. They get into the timekeeper's car and drive away. The news of their escape is shown on television. Sylvia declares that she does not want to return to her dull life. Felipe is at his office with his colleagues, assuring them that he did not pay the ransom. Will and Sylvia made the decision to take time from a lending business and give it to the public. They purchased a truck and crashed through a window. Then they take storage devices numerous times and encourage others to do the same. Later, we'll divide the time among those who require it. Meanwhile, they spot a billboard with Will and Sylvia's photo that advertises a 10-year prize for capturing them. Will and Sylvia are found by the timekeepers in their hotel room at night. The couple flees via a window. They are able to get close to a moving bus. Simultaneously, Forties discovers Will and Sylvia's whereabouts by threatening a guy. He then visits Will and Sylvia at their hotel. Will is given the opportunity to save his life by Forties, who challenges him to a strong arm match. Will struggles to win, but in the last second, he manages to flip the game around. 
Then he kills all affordances guys and takes all affordances time. Will and Sylvia are now on the roof, claiming that market values are rising across the board. Their rise has pushed the wealthy to boost their prices, so widening the gap between themselves and the poor. Smaller heights like that won't make a difference, and they'll be gone in a million years. Sylvia and will formulate a strategy. The next day, Felipe is surrounded by security after they discover Sylvia close. Will who is acting as a bodyguard aims his gun at Felipe and hostage him. They take Felipe to his office, where he has a time machine with a million years stored in it. Felipe tries to explain that there will always be someone eager to make a sacrifice in exchange for a chance at immortality. Will, enraged, nearly shoots the man dead, but regains his composure and declares that immortality is not worth the life of even one person. Raymond, the timekeepers pursues them along the highway as they leave. He collides with their car, forcing it to crash. Will exit the car and deliver the time-storing gadget to the small girl Maya. Before she leaves, he urges her to give the time to the people. The chase continues as the pair gets into a vehicle. Finally, they collide in the center of the road. Raymond then admits that he, too, is from the ghetto and has worked his way up to get out of poverty. However, he argues that the wealth gap must be maintained in order for society to function properly. Raymond's time runs out as he collapses to the ground. They also barely have a few seconds left. They rush towards Raymond's car, where they are given time for one more day. Then we see people leaving ghettos and moving into more wealthy areas with better services. The socioeconomic hierarchy is collapsing. Sylvia and will stand in front of a time, preparing for their next heist. So, the viewers this is all we have today. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for more such videos.